Good evening everyone. My name is Orzuma. I am here on behalf of Jambori and with me today is Kristen Nagan from who is representing University of Virginia's Darden School of Business. So uh, thank you everybody for joining us today. So uh, Kristen uh, uh, would like you to uh, I would request you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the uh, business school. Sure, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for having me today and for joining to learn a little bit more about Darden and our MBA program. My name is Kristen Egan and I'm an Associate Director of Admissions here at Darden. Uh, and I've been with Darden over four years now uh, and I'm excited that next week at this time I'll be returning to India. Uh, so hopefully maybe I'll have the opportunity to meet some of you while, we're, while we are traveling through India for some of our uh, information sessions in, at the end of September. Uh, so today I'm just going to spend some time walking through uh, what makes Darden, uh, the MBA experience at Darden unique. Uh, I might go through some of the slides more quickly just so that I can leave plenty of time for questions that you have. Uh, and I'm just happy to be a resource throughout the application process for any questions that you may have, and I'm happy to put you in touch with, with current students here as well uh, if there's anything particular that you're in, interested in learning more about. Uh, but today I just thought that I would just spend a little bit of time um, walking through our program, talking a little bit about the career support here, what it's like to live in Charlottesville, um, and I'll touch briefly on our application timeline and just some of the things that we're looking at when we are leading your application. So Darden on a glance, some of the things that make the Darden experience different. We are known for having the world's best education experience. Uh, the Economist has ranked us the number one education experience since 2011. Um, and a lot of that goes back to the case method experience here at Darden. Uh, so Darden and Harvard are the only two schools in the U.S. that teach completely through the case method. Uh, so what that means is instead of a a lecture style approach to learning in a classroom. Um, every class is a real case scenario. So essentially you are the CEO in class having to make a tough decision, look at the information, um, collaborate with your peers in the classroom. Um, by the time our students graduate, they've looked at between 500 and 600 cases. Uh, so that spans all different types of industries and job functions. Uh, so our students feel very confident going into any type of industry and any career. Um, really, they have the confidence to just make better decisions, articulate uh, their opinion, um, and help lead organizations all over the world. We're also known for our top-ranked faculty. Uh, our faculty, again, they lead those case discussions. They come with industry expertise. Uh, they have an open door policy, so students can go and meet with them at any time. They invite students into their home. They work closely with students on, on projects and, and writing cases together. Uh, so I do encourage you to read more about our faculty online and just get to know some of their backgrounds as well. Uh, and then just our global network. We have alumni all over the world. Um, we're a very close community, so I do encourage you to reach out to some of our alums and hear more about their experience. If you have the opportunity to come to one of our information sessions in India, we invite local alumni to come out and share more about their experience as well. So I definitely encourage you to attend one of those upcoming events. Just wanting to highlight two rankings. I mentioned our number one education experience uh, and also uh, recently ranked number three MBA program in the world. Uh, so if you have that opportunity, reach out to current students, hear more about their experience here, and I'll talk a little bit more about how students are involved outside of the classroom as well. I talked about our, our global network. I want to just jump in real quickly. I know career support is top of mind for many of you. Uh, most students coming into Darden are looking to switch their career in some way, whether it's uh, to move up within their organization or to switch into a completely new industry. We have a very supportive career development staff here, and they work closely with students before they even uh, start classes here at Darden. So all of our incoming students participated in a career kickoff meeting with their career advisor, and during those meetings, uh, their individual appointments 
where our advisors are sitting down with them, walking through their resume, listening to their career goals, and really setting them up for success through that entire recruitment process. Because it starts quickly. Uh, so when you start the program at Darden, recruiters are coming to Darden during, right during that first and second week, uh, and then all the way through that first year to hire students for those competitive summer internships, uh, and then all the way through the second year as well for those full-time opportunities. Uh, so there's a lot to take advantage of. So it's those summer career sessions. You're paired with um, a functionally aligned career advisor. We also have a group of second year students who serve as career coaches for incoming first year students. And they are great resources as well. They're coming right off of that summer internship, have been through that first core year of the curriculum, um, know how to balance the recruiting process with the rigor of the academics. Uh, so our first year students have found them to be a wonderful resource as well throughout the recruiting process. Uh, and then we also have a number of career and affinity clubs that put on various networking events throughout the year. We have over 100 different companies that are coming through Darden, but if there are companies that you're interested in learning more about, we do job tracks throughout the U.S. as well. We do a week on Wall Street in December, and that's when we take a group of students up to New York City uh, to meet with some of the top financial services employers. We've done a tech track on the West Coast. We've done an energy track in Texas. So a lot of different opportunities to meet with employers uh, who may not be coming to, to Darden as well. Some of the top recruiters for our most recent uh, incoming class are listed on this slide here. Um, consulting is still the top area that our students are going into. Uh, our dean, our current dean, he comes from McKinsey. He spent 26 years of his career with McKinsey. Uh, many of those years were spent in Belgium. So very strong connections to the consultant industry. Um, and we are seeing that that's still a top area that students are going into. Beyond that, um, still financial services, a lot with entrepreneurship and technology. Um, but those companies that you see on the, the slide listed here are some of the more recent top consulting companies for our students. So moving to Charlottesville, I absolutely love Charlottesville. So we are located about two hours from Washington, D.C., uh, very accessible to all major cities along the East Coast uh, and very easy to access cities across the U.S. Uh, we have an airport here, Amtrak station right downtown. Uh, I've lived here for almost 10 years and absolutely love everything that Charlottesville has to offer. Uh, we're surrounded by the Blue Ridge Mountains, so if you enjoy the outdoors, there's lots of hiking, um, camping, a lot of different recreation opportunities. We're surrounded by beautiful wineries and breweries. Uh, if you like, if you're a foodie, uh, we have a ton of different restaurants, great food scene here, uh, great live music, and then just the university community itself. There's always different speakers and conferences coming through Charlottesville. Uh, so it offers just a little bit of something for everyone. Uh, today is an exciting day. We have a football game happening today, so there's just a lot of energy uh, in town right now. Sports are a big part of uh, the university community here as well. Um, I'm happy to answer questions of, that you might have about living in Charlottesville uh, at, at the end of the presentation. And then here's just a snapshot of different clubs and activities that our students are part of. Uh, our students are fully immersed in the experience here, both in and, and outside of the classroom. Just to kind of walk you through what a typical day might look like. Uh, so during that first year, you have classes Monday through Thursday, three classes a day. So our students are preparing three different cases every single day. Uh, those classes will start at 8 in the morning, uh, and then they'll wrap up about by usually 1, 1 in the afternoon. Uh, something else that I like to highlight as part of that morning is every day we have first coffee. So all of our students, staff, faculty come together after that first class between 9.30 and 10 uh, just for coffee and conversation. Sometimes there's announcements made during that time, sometimes there's music. Uh, so it's just a really fun part of the day and that's been part of uh, the culture here at Darden since we were, were founded. Um, but then in the afternoon after your classes wrap up, that's where you might be meeting with some of these clubs and organizations uh, that you're a part of. 
you're preparing those cases for yourself for the next day. Uh, and then in the evening is when our students will regroup with their learning team. All of our students are put into a smaller learning team of about five to six students uh, where they're preparing the cases together for the next day. So that's kind of what a, a typical day will look like in your first year. Again, classes Monday through Thursday. Fridays are usually open. There's uh, different recruiting events happening on Fridays. Some students are traveling for conferences. Uh, so Friday schedules will vary depending on where you are in the recruiting process. Just a snapshot of what our full-time class of 2018 looks like. Um, each year we bring in a class of about 330 to 345. Uh, we continue to see the GMAT average climb each year. Uh, this past year it was around the 712. Uh, strong academic profiles coming in, 39% women. Uh, we love the diversity of our class. We have about 36 different countries represented just in our incoming class. Uh, the average age is 27. Uh, and then just the number of different industries. Our students are coming in from all different backgrounds uh, and majors. 65 different majors uh, just with across our incoming class. So just to touch briefly, I know um, many of you are probably um, maybe working through that application process now, and I'm happy to answer questions that you have on some of the things that we may be looking for. But just some of the areas of the application to be considering, we're going to be looking at your previous academic transcripts in addition to your GMAT or GRE score your resume, your letters of recommendation, the essays in the application, um, which will also include the list of community involvement and extracurricular activities, uh, and then the interview. So we have a holistic review process. We are looking at everything that you provide in your application. Uh, in terms of some of the things to be thinking about, we do have three application rounds. Our first application deadline is approaching in early October, October 5th. Our second application deadline is January 9th, and our third application deadline is April 3rd. Uh, generally, we do encourage applicants to apply earlier in our process, so in round one or two, uh, but certainly apply whenever you're ready to submit your strongest application. For the letters of recommendation, we encourage you, we do ask for two letters of recommendation, and we like to see a current supervisor or a previous supervisor or manager, somebody who can speak to the impact that you've had within your current role and organization. Uh, if you're unable to ask your current supervisor, perhaps uh, you, know, you haven't disclosed your plans uh, to pursue an MBA, or sometimes we'll have applicants who maybe just started a new position and don't feel comfortable asking their current supervisor just let us know. There's an additional comment section of the application uh, that you can just let us know why you may not have been able to choose your current supervisor or manager as a recommendation writer. But really, we're looking for somebody that's worked very closely with you and somebody that can speak to uh, your role and responsibilities in the organization, uh, different teams that you've worked with, uh, just the impact that you've had overall. So do be thinking about those letters of recommendation. Um, they do need to come directly um, from your supervisor or manager or whoever may be writing those letters for you. Uh, so be sure to give them plenty of time to submit those uh, and check in with them. Oftentimes when that application deadline hits, those, might, those are usually the last thing that we might be waiting on. So I do like to highlight that just so that you're giving them plenty of time to complete those for you. I'll also highlight our interview process. Just That's a very important part of our process. Because we teach completely through the case method, uh, we want to ensure that this is going to be a good fit for you. We want to ensure that you're going to come in and contribute to those classroom discussions, uh, that you're going to be um, benefiting from that type of learning environment. So our interview format is completely blind, which means that the person that you will potentially interview with will not have seen any part of your application. We don't even look at a resume. It's really just a conversation with you to hear more about your background, your interest in the MBA and Darden, 
Uh, so I think it's important to start sharing your story now with friends and family. So that story is very authentic when you share it um, with whoever you may be interviewing with. We'll ask more just about your background leading up to your current role and responsibilities and just how you see the Darden MBA kind of taking you to that next step in your career. In terms of just the timeline of when we extend interview invitations, so after that first application deadline, we'll extend interview invitations all the way up until our decision release date. Uh, so if you haven't heard from us uh, right away when we start to release decisions, um, please be patient. We're just usually working, continuing to work through our applications. Uh, so we will release interview invitations all the way up until that decision release date. And so if you are based in India and outside of the U.S., uh, we will either schedule an interview with a local alumni member if we have someone available, or we will conduct the interview via Skype with an admissions committee member or with a second year student. We do have a group of student admissions committee members for, from our second year class that also help conduct interviews for us. Um, but I'm happy to answer additional questions about that process as well. So I mentioned our timeline, uh, that first application deadline is soon approaching. Uh, the interview period will run all the way up through um, mid-December when we release decisions. That second round deadline, that's usually our largest application round, will extend invitations, interview invitations um, through, through um, mid-March. And then that third application deadline um, is usually a quicker round, usually a smaller uh, round of applications, and we'll release those decisions in early May. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be returning to India. I'll be arriving next week at this time. I would love to see you if any of you are based in uh, the three cities that we will be visiting. So we'll start in Delhi. We'll be there on Monday, September 25th. Then we'll move to Bangalore on Wednesday the 27th, and then we'll wrap up in Mumbai on the 28th uh, on that Thursday. So if you are available, just check out our events page and go ahead and register there. We would love to see you. I will mention I'll be with uh, my colleague Whitney Kessner, is, who's our current Interim Dean of Admissions, uh, and another one of my colleagues from our Data Science Institute, which we're very excited about. We recently launched a new dual degree program a uh, Master of Science in Data Science and an MBA, which you can complete in two years. So we're very excited about that program, and I'll have a colleague with me from our Data Science Institute um, who will be talking more about that dual degree and will be a helpful resource to answer questions if that's something that you're interested in um, applying for here at Darden. So you do complete that degree in two years. You start with uh, the data analytics work the summer before that first year at Darden, uh, and then that second year is a combination of electives from Darden and the Data Science Institute. So I want to open it up. I want to leave the rest of the time to help answer questions that you have, anything that I touched on with our, our program or living in Charlottesville or the admission process uh, and some of the things that we might be looking for. Uh, thanks, Kirsten. So um, I have a couple of questions, uh, if that's okay. My uh, sure. my first question is that you know our uh, students, our ex students who have gone to Darden, they have given us this fair, this feedback that the Darden curriculum is extremely quantitative oriented. That means you need to you need to have very strong you know quantitative background, uh, analytical skills, etc. to do well in the Darden MBA. So how uh, you know how true is that? So. Darden is known for being a rigorous program. I will say, though, it's not a requirement that you come in with a strong quantitative background. When we're reviewing your application, we want to ensure that you'll be able to handle the coursework. So we will be looking at your GMAT score, your academic transcripts, um, just to make sure that we feel confident that you'll be able to handle uh, some of that quantitative coursework. But by no means is, this a, is it a requirement. 
And we have people coming in from all different industries, um, whether it's education, healthcare, nonprofit, traditional business areas. Um, we value that diversity in the classroom, um, that industry diversity, demographics. Um, so we provide some additional support prior to classes start at Darden. Uh, we have um, Darden before Darden. So if you're coming in and don't have a heavier quantitative background, Darden before Darden is an eight-day pre-matriculation program. Uh, it's completely optional, but it's a great resource for students who just want to feel more confident going into some of those initial core classes. Um, we'll cover some of those foundational concepts in, in some of those core classes like accounting some of the language that you might be using in those classes. Um, and then sometimes if we're reading an application and just feel like the applicant could benefit from an additional coursework, um, like accounting or statistics or economics, we might reach out and just encourage them to take an additional class uh, before starting at Darden. But by no means is it a requirement. Like I said, we have students coming in from so many different industries and backgrounds. Um, but you should be able to demonstrate some quantitative proficiency uh, through the application, whether it's through your GMAT or GRE score um, or through previous academics. Uh, so in your current uh, graduating class, the one that graduated in May, so how many Indians were there? And uh, if you if you have the data, so how many Indians were there? And, um, and most of them, uh, did they end up getting jobs? If yes, then what is the... Uh, what is the number one industry in which uh, they got jobs? So I haven't seen the uh, official report from our career development center. I know they were finalizing numbers from our most recent graduating class, but uh, this class, this last year, we had 22 students um, from India, and just more generally in the past few years, all of our students, uh, I think it was 93% of our right, recent graduating class secured jobs, accepted a job within three months of graduation. Uh, many students uh, receive job offers, many more receive job offers by the time they graduate, um, but some are taking some more time to decide uh, which offer they want to, to choose. I'll say consulting uh, is still the top area that our students are going into. Uh, McKinsey, BCG, uh, Bain, all of those firms are, have been some of the top firms that some of our, our students are going into. And then technology. Uh, we've seen a lot of students going to the West Coast. Uh, Amazon has been a top company, Google, uh, really a high interest of among our more recent classes in technology. So we are seeing more students go in that direction as well. So these 22 Indians, uh, would you uh, remember their, you know, uh, what uh, bachelor's degree they were from or what industry they were from? It really varies. Uh, you know, looking at just the breakdown of the profiles of our incoming students from India, I think we had, I mean, over 20 different institutions represented. Um, all different types uh, of backgrounds coming in. I mean, a, a number do have your traditional engineering or, or business type backgrounds, but really, it really varies each year. And this past year, we have, I think right now we have 49 students between our first and second year class who are from India. Right, right. Um, also, is there any uh, difference between applying in round one and round two in terms of, you know, uh, being considered for admissions as well as scholarships? Yeah, well, generally, you know, I would encourage just aiming for round one or two. Obviously, round one is when we still have the most seats and scholarships available. Um, but I always encourage applicants to apply when you feel like you have your strongest application ready to submit. We do see a larger round of applications in round two, um, but it's really, you know, it, it, it's fine. Round one or round two is fine. I'll just say by round three, our space is much more limited at that point. Uh, so I, I do usually encourage everyone to aim towards those earlier rounds. Uh, in terms of scholarships... And I'll mention on... Right, right sure, please. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, my question was, you know, in terms of scholarships, you know, available for international students or uh, loans without co-signers available for international students. So, um, what is there any uh, information that you would like to share with our students? Yes. Um, so, for scholarships, there's not a separate application. All applicants are considered for scholarships, and those are typically worded in a full, a half, or third tuition amounts, and you'll receive a notification on whether you've received a scholarship 
right around the same time that you receive your offer. Uh, so that will be helpful as you're making your decision. We do also offer second year scholarships as well. Um, so if you don't receive a scholarship that first year, we have a number of second year scholarships. Uh, and again, you don't have to do anything separate to be considered for those scholarships. There's all different types of scholarships. Many are merit-based, so we'll be looking at some of the same information that you provide in your application uh, for those awards. And then we also work with Discover um, with our international students. Uh, that's our, our loan program that students can uh, take advantage of that doesn't require a co-signer. So I'm happy to put anybody uh, in touch with our financial aid team if you have questions about that. Um, but if you go to our admissions page uh, on our website, there's a section for international applicants that has some helpful information uh, about that process um, with our financial aid. So, so just to summarize for our students, so um, there's ample scholarships available to students in the form of you know 100% tuition waiver, 75% tuition waiver, 50% tuition waiver, and 33% tuition uh, waiver, right? And um, and if somebody doesn't yes. get a scholarship, you know, um, while joining the university, uh, there are secondary scholarships as well. So again, if they do well, if they perform well, they have a chance of winning a scholarship in the second year of their MBA as well. And um, and also yes. uh, uh, international students, uh, they can take loan uh, from your affiliate uh, financial partner uh, with uh, without any co-signers, right? Just to summarize, because financial thing is a big thing for you know in the Indian students. So just, uh, I, I hope I got all the information right. Yes, perfect summary. You captured everything. Thank right. you. <laughs> Uh, so now coming to uh, GMAT and GRE, uh, I think um, uh, just a few years ago you have started uh, accepting GRE as well. So um, is there any, uh, do you do you prefer the GMAT over the GRE or do you uh, give equal weightage to both of them? Because I saw that your average GMAT was 712, so I didn't see any information regarding the average GRE. Yeah, so we will take either the GRE or GMAT. We don't have a preference for either exam. Uh, generally, we just see more applicants applying with a GMAT. So in the past, we haven't had as many applying with a GRE to provide um, an average. Um, but I will say, you know, with those subscore areas for the GRE, it's usually around a 160, 161 or higher uh, that we are looking at. Uh, but we will take either exam. You can take the GRE or GMAT multiple times. We will look at your highest score. Uh, generally, we don't see a huge jump in scores after that fourth time that the exam is taken. So uh, I'm not sure where you are all at in your process, but if you've taken it more than four times at this point, I'd encourage you just to focus on the other parts of the application. Uh, again, it is a holistic process. We are looking at everything. Uh, so, you know, just weigh how many times that you may be taking that exam. One thing that I'll mention, well, we don't have a preference whether you take the GRE or GMAT. Some industries will ask for a GMAT score. There are some companies who ask for GMAT within consulting and financial services. So if you're thinking about going into one of those industries, you might want to do some additional research um, and consider applying with a GMAT if that's going to be something that's going to be asked of you from a recruiter during that recruitment process. Um, but from the admissions perspective, we'll just take either test score and you can self-report those scores on the application. We will require um, your official test scores upon admission and upon your decision to come to Darden. Right. So in terms of your uh, you know, application uh, deadline, so uh, for international students, you would not recommend applying in the third round, right? Or is that okay? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, we do extend offers. Yeah, we still extend offers in the third round. I just, you know, by that point in our process, space is more limited and scholarships are more limited. So I just usually encourage applicants, especially international applicants, to aim for one of those earlier rounds. And also to give yourself enough time um, with the visa paperwork that's required uh, and just getting everything in order um, for your move to, to Charlottesville. I think it's important to give yourself as much time as possible. What's the um, average in a cost of living for an international student in, uh, in Charlottesville? 
Uh, it varies. I mean, we have so many different types of, of housing opportunities available. I'd encourage you, we have a breakdown on our financial aid page um, that you can look at that provides uh, a breakdown of tuition, fees, um, and average cost of living. I'd say, you know, an apartment here in Charlottesville can range anywhere between um, 800 to 1100 a month. Most of our students will share uh, apartments here. Many of our students uh, pair up uh, on different social media channels before they start their experience at Darden um, and connect to, to find roommates. Uh, many of our students live in Ivy Gardens, which is a complex within walking distance of Darden. Uh, the Ivy Gardens and the Pavilion. There's many different uh, student housing apartment complexes that are very popular. Uh, and affordable for our students. So uh, what does a uh, garden look for in an applicant? So, you know, we really are thinking about the case method environment when we're reviewing applications. Uh, we're trying to build as diverse of a class as possible because we think it's just so important um, to have such different perspectives in that case discussion where everybody's offering a very unique angle um, in how they're looking at that case and how they would approach that case. Um, so we're looking to see that you've had experience working with, with different team members in your current organization, um, that you've taken on additional leadership in your current role or through extracurricular activities. Uh, we're looking for a strong academic background uh, to know that you'll be able to handle the rigor of the program here. Uh, and then just somebody who's really going to be involved in our community. This isn't a passive uh, learning environment. Like I said, our students are so involved in the full experience here, working closely with our faculty, taking advantage of clubs and organizations and our global opportunities. Uh, so we really want students that are looking for that type of experience, that are looking to just fully immerse themselves here in Charlottesville and at Darden for these next two years who want to come and be just a very part, close part of the community here. Right. So I have a couple of questions around work experience here. So uh, that uh, somebody wants to know if uh, 10 years of work experience is too much work experience to apply to uh, Darden. And then there's somebody who wants to know that um, if somebody uh, does not have any work experience at all or is a fresh graduate, can the, so what are his chances of, you know, getting uh, an admit from Darden. So two ends of the spectrum, literally. Yeah, so we don't have a set minimum requirement for work experience. I'll say that the average for our full-time program tends, be, tends to run between four and seven years. Um, but we have students um, with less than that, students with more than that, but that tends to be uh, the average among our incoming class. One thing I'll mention, we do have a future year admissions program uh, that we recently launched. Uh, so if you're in your uh, last year of your undergraduate degree program and are thinking about an MBA a few years uh, down the road, we're definitely encouraging you to apply earlier to get that application out of the way. So students who are completing their undergraduate degree can apply to Darden and defer their admissions for two to three years while they get some additional work experience coming into Darden. Uh, so that's uh, definitely something to, to consider uh, if you are an undergraduate uh, student right now completing your degree program. If you don't have any work experience coming in, uh, we will be relying more heavily on your academic background and looking at maybe some of your internship experience. Uh, so it's all, you know, it's it's really looking at everything that you're providing in your application. If you have more than 10 years of experience, uh, generally, you know, that's not too much, but we would encourage you to possibly consider one of our executive formats. Again, that's just thinking about the, the co colleagues that you'll have in the classroom and who you'll be learning from and how you'll benefit most from uh, that experience. But we don't have a set minimum uh, number of years of experience that we're looking for. So no minimum or no maximum cutoff also, right? So it's a, that's what I can summarize, right? Yes, um, but I would say if you do have 10 years or more of experience uh, and you want to schedule a conversation to uh, just learn more about our executive MBA formats, um, I would definitely encourage you to, to consider that as well uh, as you're looking at different degree programs. Uh, so if somebody is working in his uh, family business, the family owns a business and he works there, so that also counts as work experience, right? Or does it have to be with some external uh, organization? 
No, definitely. I mean, especially within India, we see so many family business. Uh, businesses so that is certainly counts as work experience one thing though that I would be cautious of is when you're thinking about those letters of recommendation uh, you know sometimes you know you're not going to go and ask mom or dad for a letter of recommendation in this scenario you might want to be going to a client that you've worked very closely with or a senior colleague outside of your family who you've worked closely with um, but definitely that's still very much um, valuable work experience that we see right so uh, there's an interesting question that um, from Shashank. He asks, in your pedagogy of following case study based approach, what are the main advantages over uh, you know uh, the other uh, business schools? You know, so you say that you are one of the only two business schools which has a completely hundred percent no case study method. So what? Uh, why do you think it's better than the others who do not have a case study uh, method? I'll say it's, just, it's a very active uh, learning approach, uh, so every class is incredibly engaging and our faculty have to go into every class knowing how to guide that conversation but also not knowing which direction uh, it could go in. So it's just exciting. The classes that I've sat in on, I'm so inspired by our students and, and that conversation uh, and it just gives you that confidence really in any career that you're going into uh, to form an opinion, to articulate your thoughts um, and to make a decision. I make. I made. Um, I met a recent alum on the West Coast, and she was saying one of our faculty members had come up to her and had said, you know, early in the program, he said, you know, you have the highest grade in the class, but I haven't heard from you. And he said, I'm going to call on you, you know, every single day now for the rest of the semester. And he told other faculty to do the same. And she said it was the best thing that could have ever happened to her. She said, I walk into any board meeting now, I look at the information in front of me, I can sift through the information that I need, I make a decision, I contribute uh, my, my thoughts. She's like, I just feel so much more confident in my role. And that's just what I love seeing and that's what I love hearing from our graduates. It's just that the confidence in decision making uh, and just you'll sometimes hear students say, you learn how to learn. Uh, and you learn how to think differently, and you're just challenged to to really you know think about each case and scenario from from very different angles. Uh, so it's not a passive learning environment where you're just sitting back and being lectured at. You're you're involved in that conversation, um, and you're putting yourself in the shoes of that manager or that CEO uh, that has to make those tough decisions. So, um, Momita, Momita Roy has a couple of uh, basic questions. She wants to know, do you have a GMAT uh, cutoff score? So, Momita, I know business school has a GMAT cutoff score. I think that would hold true for Darden as well. Uh, uh, she also wants to know if there is any particular kind of educational background that, uh, that uh, Darden is looking for. But, uh, no, Momita, business schools usually look for diversity. So um, I think, you know, you can apply with any, as long as you have a bachelor's degree, that is the mandate. So you can have the you know, bachelor's degree in anything you should be found. Yes. So we do require that you have a completed bachelor's degree to apply. Um, we don't have, like I said, a set number of work ex years of work experience requirement. And we don't have um, a minimum GMAT or GRE requirement as well. Again, it's everything in your application. You know, 712 has been that average um, for our most recent incoming class. Um, but again, that's an average. So we have students with less than that, some with more, some that are, have a higher score. It's really everything that you're, you're providing in your application and really pulling your whole story together and helping us just better understand where you currently are at in your career and where you see the MBA degree um, helping you uh, with your, your next career goal. So there are a couple of questions around the uh, eligibility here. So in India, as you know, we have uh, some of our bachelor's degrees are for three years. So um, so that means our formal education comes to around f 15 years of education. Uh, the engineering degrees are for four years. So that is 16 years of education. So does Darden accept the Indian 15 years of education or the three year bachelor's degree? Yes. We recognize the three year bachelor degree programs. 
so um and um, there is another question there so if somebody has already done an mba you know, from india or maybe some other business school and now wants to do um do another mba so there are business schools which do not accept applications from uh, you know people uh, applying for second mba so is there any such rule with darden so what are your what is your recommendation for people who are applying for a second mba so we, if you, you want to check the AACSB website, if you have an MBA from an accredited program from AACSB, you would not be eligible to apply to Darden. Uh, so just double check that AACSB website to see whether or not the MBA program that you completed uh, is AACSB accredited or not? If it is accredited, um, you would not be eligible to apply to Darden for another MBA. Um, if it's not, you are eligible to apply to Darden uh, for another MBA. We would just want to have some additional insight as to why you're looking to get a second MBA. Usually, you know, it's to get that global experience and to build that global network further. Um, but usually I would encourage applicants to just use the additional comment section, the optional additional comment section, just to help us better understand why you're pursuing it, another MBA degree uh, or in the interview. That's a great opportunity to just share more then as well. Right. So uh, Raghav has this question that, you know, uh, he feels that uh, people with finance backgrounds are favored, you know, how and uh, how about, you know, applicants from manufacturing background? So, Raghav, I don't think any business school has a preference for any kind of uh, background. They are, uh, I mean, their biggest USP is diversity. So, you would see, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, like, you know, as in this sheet, if you can look, you know, the 25% from business background, 21% from engineering background. So, your manufacturing engineering comes, you know, from under engineering background. So, that's 21%. And this is the, uh, you know, full-time class of 2018 profile. A uh, lot of the percentage in the, you might, just because 25% are from business does not mean that Darden prefers business background people. It's just that they probably got more applications from business background people. So that's about it. No business school has a preference for any any particular kind of you know background. So just question, please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Right. No, you're completely correct. I mean, I think all top programs are looking um, to build as diverse a class as possible, coming from all different types of industries. I think it's more about, you know, how your story comes together and how your background has shaped where you are now and where you want to go with the MBA degree. Um, we just want to better understand how you see yourself approaching that recruitment process, um, you know, and how you see yourself leveraging your unique background and different industry backgrounds uh, to get where you uh, want to go. So by no means do we have a preference for any type of background. Uh, so Deborah wants to know if if there is a there is a one year full time MBA program for internationals for people with like more work experience. Is there a one year MBA in Darden? No. So right now our program is a two year MBA program. Right. So, uh, but do you uh, take people with more than 10, 12 years of work experience into your two year MBA program? I'd say more the average is between four and seven years uh you know if you do have 10 plus years of work experience we're going to just want to better understand your why you're seeking a full-time program um, and then we're probably going to want to have a, a follow-up conversation with you uh to consider our executive mba formats as well just because the class those classes have students really uh, you know from 10 to 20 plus years of work experience uh, and just that network that you're building in those uh, classes uh, might be a better fit for you with where you're at in your career. Uh, so we might just want to have additional conversation with you with kind of what you're thinking with the full-time MBA and where your career goals are. Um, but generally within our full-time format, the average is between four and seven years of work experience. Um, I see that a lot of you are asking questions that we have already covered, you know, things like ranking or, uh, you know, jobs of international students we've already covered this question so you might have probably joined a little late so we will put up the recording of this session on our on our youtube channel so uh, please watch that uh, we are not going to take up questions which we have already covered 
So uh, Santosh has this question. You know that um, I mean, if you if you uh, uh, if you can elaborate on the dual program that you mentioned uh, with the uh, data sciences and uh, M and MBA. Sure, we're very excited about this program. Again, it's a two-year program when you complete the MBA and the Master of Science in Data Science. You start those classes with our Data Science Institute in the summer before you would start that first year here at Darden in our core curriculum. Um, and then that second year is a blend of electives uh, from Darden and with our Data Science Institute. So we do have a webinar that's scheduled for October 12th. Um, with our program director, so I'd encourage you all to register for that. Uh, and if you, even if you're unable to attend, we'll record that session, session, and we'll send that back out. That's a great opportunity to learn more. And then, as I mentioned, one of my colleagues from the Data Science Institute will be traveling with me in India, and we'll be at some of our information sessions to help answer additional questions about that dual degree program. You do need to apply separately to both programs, so you do need to apply to Darden um, and to uh, the Data Science Institute for the, the master, that program as well. So I think it's important to look at both of those applications and uh, to reach out to that program separately if you have questions about their admissions process as well. Uh, so in your uh, class profile slide, you gave a number of the, the in the, GPA. So, but in India, as you know, like we get percentages and we get all different types of grades. You know, unlike the US, we have different grading systems. So, uh, do you have a certain formula that you use to uh, convert the Indian percentages to uh, uh, to a GPA? No, so we recognize that you don't have a traditional domestic-based uh, GPA, so we're evaluating your transcript in the context of your country um, and in the context of that grading scale of the institution. So with every transcript, we'll get usually a, a breakdown of the grading scale for that institution. So we're using that when we are looking at um, how you performed academically in your undergraduate degree program. So is there any particular, uh, you know, just like the MBA, no? So uh, for the data science dual degree also, uh, is there, are you, uh, do you look at the application as a whole or do you have a expectation of, of the, you know, about the GMAT score? For the, the dual degree program? Yeah. Yeah, so we are looking at everything. It is still a holistic um, program, but if you are considering that dual degree, I would encourage you to reach out to the Data Science Institute separately and just get some additional information from them on what they might be looking for in their application process because you are applying to both programs separately. Uh, some of the uh, MBA programs in the U.S. Uh, they have recently, st uh, you know, started getting you know STEM designation for uh, you know couple of their specializations, you know, or couple couple of their uh, you know tracks. So does the um, Darden MBA also have a, a couple of tracks that have got the STEM designation? The STEM designation? Yeah. Yeah. So the data science. Um program has that designation, so it does provide an additional year of OPT uh, training here in the U.S., so that um, that program does have that STEM designation. Right, right. And uh, this data science, you know, in instead of doing a, a dual degree, can that also be taken up as a specialization within the MBA? There are, so there are a number of elective courses, so even if you do not pursue the dual degree, there are a number of elective courses in that second year very focused in, in uh, data analytics and data science uh, that our students are taking. Those have become some of the more popular electives that our students are choosing from. So by all means, even if you decide not to pursue that dual degree program, there's a number of different electives that you can choose from during that second year. So uh, while writing the admission essays, the application essays, you know, uh, what would you recommend the students to keep in mind? Because those essays can be really confusing, you know. So what recommendation would you have? What should they keep in mind? Yeah, so uh, first I just encourage you to answer the question asked. Sometimes we'll have, you know, this beautifully crafted essay that somebody's worked on for another school's application that they treat just a little bit to try and, and fit um, with the question that we're asking. With all of your school applications, just spend time um, really answering the question that each school is asking. 
one tip that we provide is to write your essay um, and give it to somebody else to proofread without the question that is being asked um, to see if they can determine what the question was. I think that's a helpful uh, tip just to see if you're answering the question and also to ask, you know, is this me? Is this authentic? You know, am I being authentic? And take with my response. This is just the opportunity and the application for us to really hear your voice uh, and to learn more about you. It's you know really you know the the biggest part of the application that you have the most control over. And um, so you know just think about some of the things that we're looking for. We're looking you know we're looking to learn more about you. Sometimes applicants will transition to into more of a why Darden message and let us know everything that they like about Darden. Um, and that's really just a missed opportunity there. We haven't, uh, you know, had the opportunity to learn about you in that essay. So just make sure that you're using that as an opportunity to tell us more about you, proofread those carefully, uh, include the right name of the school that you're applying to, and, and then just think about some of the traits that we're looking for in those essays. You know, we're looking for self-awareness, uh, leadership, collaborative skills, uh, you know, there's just, it's just an opportunity for us to, to really get to know you more in those. But they are, there is a word count, so please do follow the directions and the word count on those essays. We understand that sometimes, um, you know, candidates will say, well, there's so much more I want to write. You know, those are intentional, those word counts are intentional to kind of force you to have to be more succinct in your responses. Um, and that's good practice for when you're going to be recruiting and talking to employers. Uh, so do follow those directions when uh, you are going through those applications and answering those essay prompts. So Aditya has this question that historically Darden has been a school that has done good for people looking to be consultants. How effective is Darden's marketing stream? We have a number of students going into marketing. I would go and look at our club, our student organization and club page, um, and our marketing club would be a great resource to reach out to some of the leaderships in that organization, leadership team in that organization. We have incredible faculty coming um, within the marketing team, number of students going into brand management. Uh, so I'd be happy to put you in touch with some of those current students, or if you want to just go to. Um, like I said, our club page and reach out to the leadership team there. That would be a good resource as well. So again, IT, uh, the question is, is there any cutoff for C, uh, for GPA? Uh, just to uh, reiterate, there is no cutoff, you know, for any of the admissions criteria, whether it is a uh, number of years of work experience or GMAT score or academic percentage. There is, uh, you won't find any cutoffs, you know, in business schools, not just Darden. You won't find any cutoffs in any of the good business schools. So, uh, in on any of the on any of the criteria. <laughs> so, um, okay. Shipra's question is: Do you take into account uh, the? Uh, okay, right. What I mean, you know, see, uh, like your. Uh, do you look at the consolidated mark marks or year on year? Like, if I have a fifty percent in my first year and my eighty percent in second year and ninety um, percent in third year, so would you look at? year-on-year -year percentage as well or do you just look at you know the bachelor's you do look at the um, average uh, of all the three years we look to year over year so we look at your entire transcript and we look at the trends in your grades and uh, over the course of your degree program um, you know we also if there's something that you want to us to know more about whether you know, you had an illness during a certain year or, you know, another situation that you want us to be aware of that impacted your grades, um, you can use that optional essay to, to let us know more. But we do look at uh, the trend in your grades um, and all of your grades over your complete degree program and not just your final marks. Uh, there's another question that, you know, um, one of the major reasons why people want to do an MBA is that they want to do, um, you know, a career shift or an, or an industry shift. So, um, so is uh, Darden, uh, does Darden give um, enough opportunities for such people? You know, like, are there any experiential learning projects or something like that to help people transition from one industry to another? Definitely. So a number of our students are coming in to make a switch in some way. Uh, so like I mentioned, all of our students are paired with a functionally aligned career advisor. They do summer career kickoff meetings with all of our incoming students to really set them up for 
for success for that recruitment process. Um, you have the second year student who's a mentor as well. Um, and then in that first year, during those first few weeks, our Career Development Center does career discovery forums. Uh, and those are great for our students to take advantage of to learn more about all different types of industries and job functions that they might not have even uh, thought about. Um, and then that, through that whole two years, it's just really taking advantage of all the resources that our Career Development Center provides um, to help set you up, you know, whether it's securing that internship between your first and second year, that's going to help you switch into a new industry, whether it's leveraging our alumni network, um, there's a number of experiential opportunities. So. We have um, our Community Consultants of Jordan. That's a great student organization that works with local businesses and community, um, community organizations here in Charlottesville to provide um, consulting work for them. So that's great experience that our students take advantage of. We have our Innovation Lab, our iLab, um, and that's where we uh, support early stage startups and new ventures. So there's a lot of really cool opportunities there to, to work with different companies, to work with startups, um, and to get some experience, uh, some entrepreneurial experience. We also have global consulting projects. Uh, so if there's a region that you're interested in or an industry that you're interested in, there's a lot of opportunity to take advantage of with our global experiences uh, to get credit outside of, your, of our core classes as well. Right. So, um, of the two letters of recommendation, if somebody is uh, taking a, a letter uh, from a Darden alumnus, you know, does it carry more weight than um, you know than than us than taking it from somebody who is not a Darden alumnus? No, not necessarily. And the same thing goes for you know getting you know a person with a higher title writing that letter of recommendation sometimes you know somebody will think well if i get the ceo of my organization to write my letter of recommendation that will look better than my current supervisor or manager and that's not usually the case uh, really use your best judgment choose somebody who knows your work and knows you best um, regardless of whether you know it's the CEO or an alum certainly we love hearing from our alums and our alums can speak most directly to the culture here at Darden uh, and why they think a candidate is a good fit um, but by no means does it give you an extra advantage in our process. Uh, so really just use your judgment with who you're choosing to write those letters of recommendations and choose um, people who know you and your work. So we'll take uh, one last question. These are great questions. <laughs> Thank you so much. So is there, we'll, we'll just take one more question. We have a couple of minutes. So yes, uh, let's say somebody had started a venture, an entrepreneur, you know, but the venture did not do well and he had to like shut shop let's say you know so um, well, does does that kind of work experience uh, help and the fact that he had to shut down his uh, venture does it have a have a negative impact on the on his you know profile no not at all no definitely not I mean certainly as an entrepreneur you've taken a risk uh, in your career and you learn so much as an entrepreneur and also usually have to wear many hats uh, and jump into to many different types of challenges starting your own business. So we recognize the benefits of that and certainly understand the challenges that come with taking that risk as an entrepreneur. So by no means is that looked at as a disadvantage in our process. Uh, and there's this question, you know, uh, in your MBA, so Ankita wants to know that in your MBA, uh, can somebody take uh, marketing and economics as specialization? So Ankita, I think the information would be available on Darden's website, but you know, uh, Kristen, please feel free to add something if you want to. Sure. So yeah, we don't have designated majors within our MBA program, um, but there are optional concentrations that students can uh, take advantage of during that second year and those were developed really just to help students pick and choose from the number of electives that they have available to them in that second year so if you are interested in marketing or economics um, you can choose one of those tracks to focus your electives in during that second year but it, it's not a designated major right right so I think we are uh, we are done with the questions so thank you so much, Kristen. Thank you so much for doing this for us. Yes, thank you so much for having me. And like I mentioned, we're gonna be back in India soon. 
Uh, it would be wonderful to have the opportunity to meet some of you at our information sessions uh, and to help answer additional questions that you have. Again, use our website as a resource. That's where, really where we're um, posting the most up-to-date information on our programs and our classes. Uh, and then keep in touch with me if you have questions. Um, my email address can be found on the contact us page on our admissions site, or it's Egan K at darden.virginia.edu. I'm happy to be a resource for you throughout the process. I know that there's a lot of time that goes into these applications, and uh, we want to help as much as we can uh, as you're working through them. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good evening, everybody. I'll put my email address in the chat box here so you have it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody, for making it such an interactive session.